Deep down under the kilometer-thick ice sheet of Antarctica, scientists have made incredible discoveries. Perhaps the most fascinating region of our planet holds some truly incredible secrets, and this video features original footage of these discoveries that will blow your mind, I promise. So be sure to stay tuned until the end and if you like it, I'm galactically happy about a thumbs up and a comment, because that's how we get the YouTube algorithm to show this exciting topic to even more people. Thanks guys and welcome. Antarctica is definitely one of the most exciting areas on our planet and what many don't know. The research there also brings us further in the research of life in space. In this video, I have therefore compiled the most exciting topics and discoveries of the recent past in the icy continent. Fasten your seatbelts, because we are going on an unimaginably exciting journey into the eternal ice. And we'll start right off by exploring a world that lies beneath this ice. A world that seems to be from another planet. Let's go to the subglacial lakes. Perhaps the most impressive continent on our planet is Antarctica. That's the official name, colloquially people sometimes say Antarctic, but that only refers to an area south of a certain latitude, but the continent is called Antarctica. Antarctica is a continent because there is a land mass under the ice, unlike the Arctic in the Northern Hemisphere. People only really realized this in the 19th century before which they had no idea that there was actually a gigantic land mass and that it was a continent of superlatives. The ice that rests on this land mass and for which the continent is known is called the Antarctic Ice Sheet or the Antarctic Ice Sheet. It covers an area of 12.3 million square kilometers. So it really is a gigantic ice desert and 70% of the planet's entire freshwater supply is stored there. But perhaps the most fascinating places on the continent are not at the top, on the ice, but kilometers below. There are so-called subglacial lakes in Antarctica. These are lakes that are located under a glacier, under a sheet of ice. But not every frozen lake in your nearest park is a subglacial lake, because the prerequisite for this qualification is that the lake lies kilometers deep under the ice. And in Antarctica, there are at least 370 such subglacial lakes that have already been discovered. In other words, lakes that are really kilometers deep under the ice. By far the largest of these mysterious lakes is Lake Wostok, named after the Russian Antarctic station Wostok. This is 4 kilometers below the surface, liquid water and all, 250 kilometers long and 50 kilometers wide. That means we have an underground Antarctic lake here that is bigger than the state of Cyprus. Wow, and it's not just some puddle in terms of height either, the lake goes 1200 meters deep. I think it's safe to say that we're looking at the most mysterious and pristine lake on the entire planet. You may be asking yourselves, how can there be liquid water under this eternal ice? It should freeze immediately, right? It's because of the high pressure. It is so deep under huge layers of ice that the pressure there is so high that the freezing point of water changes. At these pressure conditions, water only freezes at minus 3.1 degrees Celsius, and the average temperature down there in Lake Vostok is only minus 3 degrees Celsius. This means that the water can remain liquid, but I still wouldn't go swimming there, because it's already pretty cold. Okay, okay, now you might be thinking, why is this guy telling me about some weird lake under Antarctica? So there's a bit of cold water there. So what? But it gets even more exciting. At some point, some countries doing research in Antarctica decided to drill into this lake. This was highly controversial, because they said, maybe life can be found there and if we drill into it, we will contaminate it and then all future research results about this lake would no longer be relevant. But in the end they said, okay, with our modern drilling method, we can avoid contamination. In 2012, the Russians actually succeeded in drilling into this lake at a depth of 3,700 meters, taking a water sample and sending it to the laboratory. And what came out of it was really freaky, they found traces of life. And of diverse life. They found genetic material from bacteria, fungi, and parasites. 
and parasites actually only thrive in places where there is actually only multicellular life, that is, worms or maybe even fish. That is, we have this subglacial lake here at 4 km depth with perhaps completely unknown species of bacteria, fungi, worms and fish swimming around. How crazy is that? The conditions down there are suitable for life despite the extreme circumstances, on the one hand, because of the high pressure, as I already said, which keeps the water liquid, and on top of that there seem to be tides down there, high and low tides. You're probably familiar with this if you've ever been to the sea and the gravitational effect of the moon and the sun, which can still be felt even there at depth. These tidal effects then provide the necessary currents needed for life. The future will show whether we can explore Lake Vostok even better and then perhaps study some of these unique species. But, as I said, you always have to be careful not to contaminate such a pristine place. That is, to really try to just take a closer look at the species down there, but that might be very difficult. But what is also very exciting about these research results, is that they tell us a lot about whether there might also be life on the icy moons of Jupiter and Saturn. In principle, Antarctica is an extraterrestrial environment, because on the icy moons of Jupiter and Saturn, Europa and Enceladus, for example, we have very similar conditions, icy temperatures on the surface, a kilometer thick layer of ice and, confirmed, a liquid ocean beneath the ice layer. The reason why the water on the icy moons can be liquid, even though they are so far away from the sun, is the gravity of Jupiter and Saturn respectively. Jupiter, for example, is twice as heavy as all the other planets in the solar system, and its gravity and the resulting tidal forces keep the ice liquid. So we don't necessarily need the proximity of a star like the Sun for liquid water, the gravity of a large planet is also sufficient. On moons like Europa, this also leads to the liquid water spraying out at the surface in so-called creovolcanoes. Now let's apply our findings from Lake Wostok to the subterranean lakes of the icy moons. We know that tidal forces and the presence of liquid water can create life even under kilometer-thick ice sheets. So what's to say it didn't happen the same way on the moons of Jupiter and Saturn? Mohit Mulwani Daswani is a planetary scientist at NASA, and he says of the likelihood of life on Europa's moon, our simulations combined with data from the Hubble Space Telescope, which detected chloride on Europa's surface, suggest that the water today is most likely chloride-rich as well. This makes the composition of Europa's ocean similar to the oceans on Earth. We believe that this ocean may well be habitable for organisms. In fact, Europe is one of our best chances of finding life in our solar system. More detailed findings on this could come in the next few years. NASA's Europa Clipper spacecraft is scheduled to launch in 2024. It is expected to have 44 flybys at the moon Europa, and then prepare for a follow-up mission where they will even lower a lander robot onto Europa. Maybe this will be the moment we discover extraterrestrial life in our solar system. I am extremely excited. The idea of how life can thrive in such an extreme environment is really super fascinating. New Zealand researchers thought so too and sent a probe through a subglacial river. This probe then sent back images that really made the researchers' jaws drop. What mysterious life forms did the researchers find under the ice? Check it out in the second part of the Antarctica series in the next few days. And if you want to support my work, treat yourself to the shirts from the videos, real meteorites and fluffy plush planets in the space shop. Every purchase helps me a lot to keep the channel going. Otherwise I would say, let's see the next video. Take care, guys.